Hey everybody, it's me, Tom Angleberger, the author of The Strange Case of Origami Yoda, the new two-headed chicken series, and, of course, R2-D2's Guide to Folding and Doodling. And uh, that's what I want to talk about today. See, for years, we've had instructions floating around for an R2-D2, and they were, they were like this. And um, I'm not sure I really realized that I had never put up instructions for making an R2-D2 like the one on the cover of the book, which has legs that are stand out from the body. So while this was a great finger puppet, and I really like it, um, it is nice to be able to have those legs like that. And so I recreated R2-D2, and um, here he is. Oh, you know what? I forgot to draw his, uh, got to draw the little circle here like that. That really brings them to life. You got to have that for R2-D2. So um, there he is. There's R2-D2. And um, I'm going to show you how to fold him. And if you want, you can do it with foil and cut paper, or you can just do it with a piece of white paper and a magic marker. It's up to you. Um, either way, I think you're probably going to want to have some tape on hand. And if you're doing the cut paper, you're going to want to have a glue stick. Notice my glue stick holder here and you're also going to need some scissors and if you want to do the foil and cut paper method you'll obviously need foil and paper to cut all right well let's get started on this thing it is a slightly complicated process that might be why we've never done it uh didn't do a video of it back in the day when the book first came out so what you take what you need is uh, i just need to clear a little space here my desk is always a mess. It's one of the fun things about these videos is every year you get to see all the junk on my desk. And, um, oh, by the way, um, happy May the 4th. I always post a video on May the 4th every year. And this year I'm doing two. I'm doing this Art 2D2 and I'm doing this three-dimensional AT-AT all-terrain armored transport from Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi, of course. All right, but that'll be a separate video. This video is going to be all about making art 2D2. All right, here we go. You take a piece of regular copy paper, eight and a half by 11, and you fold it in half like this. Okay. So now you're going to make a little bit of a decision. You're going to fold these corners in a little ways. How far? Well, that's up to you. It's going to, if you'll experiment with it a little bit, you'll find that folding at different amounts gives you a different R2-D2. But just eyeball it. It can be any amount. Obviously, you don't want it to be so much that it takes up the whole thing. It's a little bit like that. And while I don't believe in measuring, I do think you should try to eyeball it and get it close on the other side. We're going to fold the same fold on the other side. You want it to be close enough so that R2-D2's legs aren't wonky. Although it's probably going to end up a little wonky anyway. So the next move will be familiar to you if you ever did the original Origami Yoda that's in the first Origami Yoda book. We are going to take these corners and we're going to tuck them inside. Um, if you already know how to do that, go ahead and do it. If you've never done it before, why don't you do something to make it a little easier? Take one, take a corner and fold it back behind, but using that same crease line. You're just making the crease go in the other direction, and that's going to make it a lot easier to fold inside. Okay, so if you flip it over now, you've got the same thing. It looks like the same thing, but your creases are a little more flexible. And that's going to let you open things up a little bit and push that corner inside. See how I'm pushing that inside? And when I fold down like this, I've got, I didn't make any new creases. I just used the existing creases, fold that corner inside. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. If you're having any trouble, I'll try to get in close here and give you a good look. It helps if you sort of grab this corner here and push on it, just shove it on in there. And because those creases are already there, should fold up pretty nicely for you. Okay, all right, 
Yeah, this is definitely not as easy as this R2-D2. If we were doing this R2-D2, we'd be done already. So if you want to look on my YouTube channel for instructions for this one, you might want to because it is a lot simpler. All right, but if you're ready for this one, here we go. We're going to keep going. We're going to take this here from the top. Take it, just one layer. There's two layers up there, just one layer. Pull that layer down, and you're going to, you're going to see that it wants to wants to fold down too much. You don't want it to fold down too much. You want it to fold down just right so it matches up to those corners we had a little bit ago. So there's that corner and I just made a new fold that matches up pretty close. Pretty close to that corner. Not exactly. Pretty close. All right. If you've ever folded with me before, you know I'm never about doing things exactly. All right, now we're going to flip over. Finally, an easy couple of folds. These are simple. You just take this flap here, fold it over, crease it down. Once again, you take this flap over here, fold it over, keep things straight, crease it down. Okay, crease everything down, make sure everything's good. So, We've done the hard parts. Now the rest of it's going to be kind of fun and kind of about eyeballing things. You're going to take this side over here, fold it over so that it's right up against that edge. That edge right there, fold it. You're just folding this over. So far, almost everything's been at straight lines, and we're not going to change that. This is going to fold back over also in a straight line but not all the way. See how I see how we did that? This whole section folded over, but then it folded back like that. And if you flip it over, you're going to see it looks like this. It's just going to be sticking out and you'll fold that corner down and I think you can see how that's going to be R2D2's arm. Or leg. I'm not sure if those are arms or legs. All right. Sound good so far? All right. I hope you're still with me. If you had trouble with that last step, watch again because I'm going to be doing it on the other side. I fold this whole section over like this, give it a good crease here, and then I'm going to fold it back in the other direction, but not all the way. Like that. And when we look at it from the front, it looks like that. And we fold this corner back. There we go. It's actually a really good fold right where we are right now. It's pretty good for making a person with a couple of arms. You could fold these corners back here and have a pretty good Mandalorian. Or you could fold other pieces of paper out. This could be um, a Yoda. It could be a Princess Leia. Lots of options from here, but we're going to keep going for R2-D2 from here. So, before we do the dome here, let me show you about getting the this section here so the legs stick out below the base of the model. Okay, so we're going to flip that over again. Now, remember... Remember how we did these folds up here and they squashed down and made these nice triangles for us, these nice arrows? Well, we're going to be doing the same thing, but it's a lot smaller, okay? So I'm going to try to move in close here so you can see. It's going to be very similar. I tell you what, if we try to do it from this side and fold this inside of here like this, it's extra difficult. You can do it, but it's a little extra difficult. Let's flip things over to the front. We'll do it on the front, and then later we'll tuck it out of sight. Okay? So, let's see if we can do this. You're going to grab the bottom here, and you're going to start pulling up on it. Okay? And you're going to pull up as far as it will go. It won't go very far. Okay, we're pulling up on it as far as it will go. It won't go very far, so we squash it down 
when it's about as far up as it would go. And see how it made that nice triangle, just like the triangles on the back? All right, let's try that on the other side over here. And you'll see I wasn't able to complete this fold yet. That's because we've got to go over here and get one of those triangles over on this side too. Okay, and this one is giving me a little bit of trouble there. See how it doesn't want to go? Well, nobody's going to see this part, so I'm just going to squash it. I'm just going to squash that part down. Boy, <laughs> sometimes people mistakenly think I'm good at origami. Uh, luckily, these videos show clearly that I'm not. <laughs> That's all right. Okay, so we take what we've done so far and we fold it back down temporarily so that we can tuck it out of sight. So fold it back down, flip it over, and then you're going to go in here and you're going to start folding it up inside the model so that it's out of sight and those triangles are going to help you. Okay. I don't know if you can even see this in the video. It should hopefully make sense when you get to it. More and more I'm starting to remember why I didn't make instructions for this. It's it's tricky and a little bit fiddly, but I think we're getting there. Now, you can see R2-D2 will be standing up off the ground on his legs when like that. And honestly, I think his leg, his arms are sticking out a little too far. I'm going to fold them back just a little bit on each side. Each one of these is going to turn out a little bit different because we didn't measure. So you'll see this one's a little different than the, the previous one I made. The other one stands up off the ground a little better. And um, other than that, they're pretty similar. I think uh, yeah, the, the first one ended up being wider. Same size paper, just ends up all a little different depending on how you fold it. And that's what I like. You can fold several of them, decide which one you like the most, and whichever one you like the most is the one you'll finish the decorating on. Speaking of which, let's do this. Let's decorate this. And I think it would be pretty simple for you to know how to decorate one just with uh, magic markers. You've got the, the arrow here and the arrow there and the little box down there. You've got some sort of strange little shapes there, one of which has a, a little camera or something in it. And then you've got the little dog house up here with the red light in the middle. Okay. That's if you want to do it with magic marker. I figure you can probably handle that on your own. And you could even do a much better job than I did. For instance, this one doesn't have the exhaust ports on it. So you can do that however you want to. Let me show you, though, how I do the foil and paper method. So we're just going to take one little step backwards and fold these, open up R2D2 a little bit here so that we can put the paper on the tin foil. I've got a little sheet here that I cut. Sorry for all the flashes there. You're just going to tuck that down inside. There's a little pocket for it. Tuck it down inside and then fold the legs back where they were. Oh, my bottom part that I had hidden popped out there. There we go. Okay, so there we go. We've got something that looks terrible. Let's flip it over. Let's fold the sides in. Like that. And fold this down. Okay. And now let's take a look at it from the front again. How tall do we want his dome to be? That's too tall right there. Let's see. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold down from the top a little bit here. Just, just bending that back behind R2. There we go. Like that. And then I'm going to fold these corners back. Ah, there we go. The reason I saved this for last is this is a great time to find out the proportions of your R2-D2, the way he turned out. And you can adjust the dome depending on how the rest of it turned out. So if you need to make a dome a little higher to fit the size of the legs, etc., this is a great time to fix that. 
All right, let's look into getting these pieces here. Um, let's see, there's the tape. And here's my glue stick. I'm going to go ahead and get the glue stick going here because as we finish each piece, we're going to want to stick it down. Okay, hold on to that. So the first thing we do, let's cut these strips that go across here. Let's see, is that big enough? Now, you'll notice the ones on the, ones on the book are like this. So if you're trying to exactly create the ones on the book, you'll want to cut them real thin and narrow. But I actually kind of like the way the big chunky looks here. So let's make them a little bigger. We're going to cut a strip. We're just going to eyeball this. See how that looks. That looks like maybe a little longer. One strip and two strips. Okay, like that. Now we put those two strips together so that we can cut out matching arrows for them here. They're not arrows, of course. They're some kind of cover. I'm just going to trim the larger one there so they're about the same size. One end is going to get clipped like that. And then come back a ways and cut a little notch into it. I'm not sure what that's for. I guess R2 knows. Now, they're going to go on here like this. Oops. <laughs> like this. And this. All right. Bear with me while I put a little glue on them. In react, Normally, I do a nicer job with the glue, but I don't want to waste your time <laughs> watching me use a glue stick. I'm sure you know how to use a glue stick. So here comes the other one. And that one will go right there. All right. Those are a little close to his dome. I'm gonna... Well, too late. <laughs> I did a terrible job. All right, but that's okay. Now, let's get his... Let's see. What part do we want next? Let's get his little um, exhaust port down here. Just going to trim a little piece like that. And in fact, I didn't do this on the cover Yoda, but I believe... In reality, R2, his pieces are have the corners cut like that. Let's see. There we go. Of course, this is just a very basic approximation of what R2-D2 looks like. You can do a much better job, I'm sure, if you um, if you wish. So uh, you're also going to cut, I won't do it on the video because I think you can figure this out yourself, cut two tiny little pieces of, um, of tin foil there to put, on the, to put on R2's exhaust port. I was going to try to peel this off, but stick, just stick it over there. There we go. All right. I messed up the other one. Oh, my goodness. All right. There we go. Like that. I should have just cut the pieces. It would have been a lot simpler. All right. So now we want, we're going to cut a longer strip that's going to go all the way across like that. And it's going to have one long piece that goes there. Okay. Then it's going to have three shorter pieces. One, two, three three, and then one more piece over on the side like that, okay? Once again, bear with me while I use the glue stick here. The long piece goes all the way on the edge, and you can actually tuck them down into the pocket a little bit there if you want to. Um, next, we have a piece that goes next to it but leaves a little gap. That was supposed to go on the edge. There we go. I like that to go all the way to the edge. Next one leaves a little gap. This piece here goes on the other edge. I'd like to go ahead and get that down so that I know where to put the last two. Here we go. Put one piece there. You know, I'm, I'm not sure that there's enough room on here for, the, uh, for another piece in there because I'm going to want to put his camera there or 
electronic eye or something. So let's just leave that space for right now. And the most important part is the little trapezoid up here where another one of his electronic eyes goes. That's a little too big. I'm just going to trim off the bottom and I think it'll be right. Get the glue on there. Ah, there we go. There it is. Now, as far as his other two electronic eyes, let's just grab, uh, I got a piece of a purple envelope here. It's not quite the right color I was looking for. Let's see. Uh, here's a piece of paper down here. Maybe this is the color I wanted. Yes, here we go. Gonna, oh, it's still pretty purple. Oh, that's all right. <laughs> R2 doesn't mind. So I'm just going to cut a little bit of uh, out of this, and I will make, I'll just cut the corners off. And pop that little glue on there and put that there. That looks all right. I'm not sure I'm completely happy with that color, but we'll fix that another time. And then I need a little bit of red. I've got some red here. I will just trim a tiny corner off of my paper and cut out a little stop sign kind of shape here. Doesn't have to be perfect. Why? None of the rest is perfect. Why start now? You know, I wonder if this would look better if the red was up there. Eh. That's all right. I kind of like that. So now I need to, I pasted that right on top of the purple. Let me uh, make another purple. You can do this however you like, of course. This one has gone on for so long and has been so many little things where you get to make up your own decisions. It's kind of like Bob Ross, I feel. It's kind of like a Bob Ross program. You can have happy accidents and happy trees and hopefully a happy Art 2D2. Well, there he is, folks. Art2D2 coming at you. Let's see if he looks anything like the guy on the book. Not too shabby. He does. You can make him a, that little arm if you want to. And um, I believe one of our super folders, Super Folder Stingray, uh, doesn't Super Folder Stingray have a video of how to put an actual light inside your R2? Super Folder Stingray is pretty amazing. So check out Stingray's YouTube channel for that information. Uh, for now, I think I'm going to sign off. I'm going to go make the video to go with this one, a video about the ATAT. I hope you guys had a great May the 4th. If you're watching this on another day, I hope your day was great. If I can find uh, the origami me, I will say, may the force be with you always. See you next time, Super Folders.